Hi there. Well, I was at the airfield the other day with a friend and he was telling me that he had a problem with a muffler inside a cowl getting it to fit onto the engine and how he needed to make a spacer. And we had a bit of a conversation about this and then I thought nothing more of it. And then a couple of weeks later, I was coming to fit this lovely old Merco 61 into a trainer that I'm building. And I really want to use one of these pig power mufflers. These are the original mufflers. I think this is a later one, but these are the original dustbin mufflers that were produced by Merco. And I just, for kind of historic sake, I want to fit one of these. I could fit a more modern exhaust, but I, it just doesn't appeal to me. And so I came to fit this and it won't actually fit very well because I need a spacer. Now you can buy commercial spacers, this is one for an Irvine 40, but I haven't got one and a quick search of the internet I couldn't find anything that was appropriate. But more to the point, I really fancied making my own. Now I don't have a big machine shop, I don't have a milling machine, the only thing I have other than hand drills is a bench drill and some files and hand tools. So I'm going to make one using those uh, uh, tools and I think it would be quite an easy process and I thought it would be quite useful to share with you guys because there's probably other people out there that think well if I haven't got a machine shop I can't really be making things like spacers for engines. So I'm going to make one and we'll have a look at it and see how I do it. I'll just move the camera around now and I'll show you what I'm planning and how I'm going to do it. Right, we can see from this, here's my Merco 61 in the engine stand and if I place a, this piece of half mil, uh, sorry, half inch, 12 and a half mil alloy square and I place the dustbin against that, that is going to be about the right width for my um, spacer. So what I've done is first of all I've drawn out what I need to have for the spacer. So I need the two holes for the bolts. Bolts are going to go through into the engine from the back of the dustbin through the spacer. I also need to take out this piece here for the exhaust gases. Now the width of this opening is 7mm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill four holes and I'm going to do them less than 7mm. I'm probably going to do them 5mm and then I'm going to file this out. Take a bit of work but I would rather do that than try and do it with a 7mm drill in case there's a little bit of drift. I'm using a pillar drill, bench drill, but it's not a really expensive one and it may drift a little bit so I'd rather file it to shape. Now this half mil is a little bit too wide for the recess in this dustbin muffler. So what I will do when I've done it is just file this down a little bit at the edges, chamfer it down so it will fit into the, uh, into the recess. You can see here I've marked that already. I've put in the two crosses where the, just get the center punch, two crosses here where the holes are for the muffler bolts and then I'm going to drill my four holes there and file that out. So I'm going to get on and do that now on the bench drill and we'll come back and have a look once I've done it. Right, well I've got this in my machine clamp, machine vise and I'm going to drill this on a really nice slow speed. And I've made a lot of effort to get it nice and square and level in the vise. Right, well I've now drilled this out and I've got all six holes. I've got the three mil holes at either end which are going to take the mounting bolts through the muffler to the, uh, the, the crankcase and then I've got these bigger holes which I've actually drilled out six mil, the four and I'm going to join them up, file them through to create that exhaust port. 
Now I didn't drill these out at 6mm straight off, I put in some small pilot holes and then counterboard them to the bigger size. I find by doing that, and this is just trial and error, I'm not a machinist, just by trial and error I get a more accurate hole that way and less drift. You can see there's a very slight bit of drift but not a lot. And if we try the bolts from the muffler, just to check that that fits. Yeah, they're in line, which is, uh, which is always a good start. So what I'm going to do now is put this in the vise and uh, file at this exhaust port and then we'll come back and have a look at it. So I'm just using a fret saw with a, a metal blade to, uh, to cut out between the holes before I actually file the channel to shape. Right, well I've now cut out the pieces between the holes and that makes it a lot easier. I can just put it in the vise horizontally and, uh, and file through the holes to create the, uh, the duct. Right, well I've now got a fair bit of the machining, hand machining I suppose, uh, done. I've got this cut out and filed to shape and that's looking really good now and um, what I need, I, I'm leaving it on the bar at the moment because it's a lot easier to hold in the vise and I'm holding it in the vise between blocks of wood because I don't want to damage these surfaces. They will need cleaning up and making sure they're lovely and flat but the least damage I can do the better and I've had that on there and I don't know how well that shows but that's just the right size now that um, that exhaust opening channel so what I need to do now there are two main things I need to do the the bar itself fits quite nicely on the uh, on the exhaust outlet of the engine. A little bit big, but that's fine. Uh, it'll give you know good good room for a gasket and for a seal. On the uh, dustbin muffler, though, it doesn't fit particularly well. Well, it, no, it doesn't fit at all because this is recessed in, and that's to account for the curve of the dustbin. So this is recessed in, and you can hopefully see there that this, my new uh, spacer, is going to be too wide to fit onto that. So what I'm going to do, the one side I'm going to leave to fit onto the engine, the other side I'm going to narrow down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to file an angle on this all the way around so that I, um, I reduce the thickness of this so it fits into that quite nicely. And to help me do that, I think what I'm going to do is just use a marker pen and put a, a line on here. And I'll check this. I, I need to check that how far I need to go. But I'm going to put a line on all the way around at where I need to file to. And then I can just chamfer that down, taper it down so that it fits within this. So I'm going to do that now and then we'll come back and have a look. Once I've chamfered this down, I should be ready to, um, to cut this off and uh, just profile that end. Actually, there we go, look, I've just marked that. Hopefully that, uh, that shows up. So I'm just gonna file down to that now and put a taper on this. Okay, well I've now chamfered that down. You can see it's thicker on that side and thinner on that side. And that now fits in to the, uh, to the dustbin muffler. And I don't know whether that will show on the camera. 
um, but you can see the sides now that it will fit into there. It's, it's going to be tight but there will be some finishing off to do anyway once I've, uh, I've cut this off the bar. And you can still see the file marks in here quite, uh, quite deep and I'm planning on polishing this up but we'll have a look at that later. So the next stage now is for me to actually cut this off the bar and then, um, and then get this end sorted. Well, I'm almost there now with this spacer. I've got it to the correct shape. You can see how it tapers down here to fit into the silencer and yet still broader here to fit onto the, uh, the crankcase. And that fits in lovely. It's, it's a tight fit, but it is a good fit. And uh, there is a little bit of wiggle there but not a lot, so I think that is just right. Now, you can see this, it's a lovely smooth finish now, quite a brushed kind of aluminium look, and I've been using 400 wet and dry on that to smooth it off, and you can see what it was like, oops, what it was like originally, that's the side I haven't done, and that's the side I have done. I've done the ends a little bit, I was thinking I might do it even finer than this and put a bit of a shine on it, but I quite like this brushed aluminium finish, so that is going to be uh, be the finished look. So I just need to get on now and uh, and put wet and dry on that and uh, smooth it all off. And then the only final job will be to do these surfaces, and these I will do on a really fine maybe a thousand grit wet and dry or 800 wet and dry and I'll actually do those on a piece of glass and so I'll put a piece of glass on the draining board, tap onto it and I will do that to make sure that I get them absolutely flat and I might even just very slightly countersink these uh, these holes but I will I will clean those up like I say on a piece of glass to make sure they're absolutely flat so I get that perfect uh, perfect finish there. So once I've done that and once that's finished I've been trying it onto here and you can see these bolts are the right length to fit onto the exhaust uh, manifold on the crankcase but once I start putting on this spacer they're no good. So I, the next job is I'm going to make some longer bolts and we'll have a look at that in a second. I'm just going to get this finished now and get this cleaned up. Right, well I've now got my finished spacer all cleaned up and, uh, and ready to go and it's got this lovely brushed surface now which I'm really really quite pleased about and if we have a look and see how it fits I've made myself a couple of longer bolts because if you remember the existing bolts weren't going to be long enough and these are just made out of threaded rod with a dome nut soldered on the end. These were these were uh, brass nuts and um, I was thinking that would be quite nice, nice bit of bling, look good, but um, I put a little bit too much silver solder on when I soldered the nut on the end, so uh, they've gone sort of silver coloured now. But, uh, but they look alright, they look good, and uh, they'll probably tarnish anyway once they get warm, so the uh, spacer goes on like that and I think we'll put it on that way and see if I can get this screwed on there we go and what I've actually done is made the bolts as long as possible so that they screw well into the um, into the crankcase housing rather than the existing bolts I had they were actually uh, quite quite small and, and there wasn't much thread actually within the housing itself. I will eventually, when I uh, come to set this up, I will eventually put on um, um, two gaskets. I, I, I do quite like gaskets between my uh, exhaust manifold and crankcase. But there we go. And that's our finished spacer. And that will give me just enough space now to um, to allow the engine, uh, sorry, the exhaust muffler to sit just outside the fuselage without cutting big chunks out and without 
cutting some off the engine mount. To be honest, I probably will shave a little bit of a corner so the plastic isn't quite as, as close to that. But there we go. Well, it feels really good now to get this spacer finally finished and fitted. It means I can get on with my Great Plains Trainer 60 now and finish off doing the fuselage because I know exactly where the exhaust is going to sit. Now, it's been quite a bit of work doing this. A lot of filing. If you don't like filing, it's probably not the thing for you. And if you've got a machine shop, a milling machine, there are far easier ways. But a lot of model makers like myself, we perhaps have a, a bench drill, pillar drill, and nothing else. And if you really need a spacer that you can't buy, this is a great way to produce it. And to be honest, there was quite a bit of filing, but it didn't take that long. And it's a really good sense of achievement. So, anyway, I'm going to get on with my trainer and get this fitted. And I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. Thanks very much for watching.